Good afternoon everyone, it's Jim here at Tutor2 headquarters welcoming you all to this, uh, our first BTEC National Business Unit 3 revision blast and let's hope, head over to the live lounge to see who we've got presenting the session today. Oh that's a relief, it's not me, it's Michelle and Chris, so perhaps in the Hi. chat window whilst they just confirm that they're live and kicking, uh, maybe just um, put a hello into the chat window. And maybe I'll also ask Michelle to turn her volume down so she doesn't hear me. <laughs> Michelle, uh, before we get going, do you want to just give us a quick overview uh, as to what we're going to be covering today, how it, how the session works, how you want the chat window to work and that kind of thing. Then when you're ready, just uh, give me the nod and we'll make a start. Absolutely. A real warm welcome to the first in a series of Unit 3 Knowledge Blasts. Uh, in the session today, we've created a number of different activities to test your knowledge of learning aim A and B, personal finance. The format is really simple. Chris and I will take you through uh, a question and then you will uh, puff, pop in your answers in the live chat window and then we will give you the answers too. Uh, it might be worth, if there are any topics that you're struggling on or you think, I really haven't got a clue, just make a note because obviously this will help inform your revision when you have any uh, in-class assessments. So Jim, I think we're ready and we're gonna kick off with some multi-choice. So are we ready folks? Here we go. Which of the following is not a function of money? Is it A, legal tender? B, exchange rate, C, value of exchange, or D, store of value. What do you think? Is it A, B, C, or D? Pop your answers in the chat window, and then Chris will give us the answer. We've got Connor there thinking it's A. Joyce there going for B. So Chris, can you give us the answer, please? A, B, C, or D? So the right answer is B there. So it's not an exchange rate. So the functions of money is legal tender, value exchange, and store of value. So exchange rate is the correct one there. Fantastic. Okay, next question. Which of the following is a disadvantage of buying shares as an investment? So A, dividends are not always paid. B, shareholders can receive additional benefits such as discounts or offers. C, shares can increase in value. Or D, potential for high return. We're looking for the disadvantage. Okay, we've got loads of people here getting the correct answer. So Chris, the correct answer is? Uh, it is A for that one, dividends are not always paid, so firms are not obliged to pay their shareholders a dividend. Uh, at the end of the year. Fantastic. Lovely, Thank loads you. of responses there. Superb, okay, so which of the following now is not a method of payment that can be made from a current account? Is it A, store card, B, debit card, C, credit card, or D, a check? What do we think? Lots of answers coming through here. We've got Lily there, she's put A. Connor again's gone for A. So uh, Chris, the answer please. So the correct answer there is store card, so it's not directly attached to a current account, whereas the other three options are. Brilliant, great responses there. Most people getting that answer correct. Okay, number four, which of the following is an advantage of a prepaid card? Is it A, it can be used without a PIN? B, it can be used even when your account is overdrawn? Is it C, it helps to control spending? Or is it D, it is issued by a high street store? What do we think? Lots of answers and lots of correct answers here. I think this is the best answered uh, question we've had so far, Chris. So the answer is? It is C for that one. It does help to control spending. One of the big advantages of a, a prepaid card there. So great stuff. Loads of responses. Thank you. Superb. OK, so our next activity, a little bit different. You have 90 seconds to answer these questions. So we're going to ask you for uh, three phrases, three terms relating three so sorry, start again. We're going to have ask you a question which has for three types of something, two types of something, and then one type of something. 
but you only have 90 seconds and it's for the length of time that the music is playing. So Jim, let's get started. Five, so we're going to have three four, types of current account, three, two ways a bank can communicate, two, and one reason why planning expenditure is important. That is superb music. <laughs> Great stuff, Shannon. Well done. Well done, Holly. Gilbert's gone on to the second one. Well done. Brilliant. Okay. Well done, Joyce. And Gilbert's got right down to number one there. Done well in time. Well done. Yeah, loads of good dancers coming up in the chat here. Great stuff. Okay, Chris, I think it's fair to say that team business here certainly know the answers to this three, two, one <laughs> challenge. Okay, so let's take a look at the answers. Brilliant. So uh, three types of current account. Um, most of you getting this correct. Basic, standard and premium, you may also have said student account fantastic next one we go down to number two so two ways that a bank can communicate with their customers we put in branch online banking you may also put telephone or postal and then we went down to uh, one so one reason why planning expenditure is important we put it controls uh, it stops uh, uncontrollable debt you may also have put it avoids bankruptcy, control costs, enables you to set financial targets or perhaps manage money to fund a purchase. So really great answers there. Well done, guys. Let's get on to the next activity, Jim. OK, so I think I'll take over for this one, Michelle. Uh, yeah, so absolutely. this is the connection wall. So we've got 16 phrases here, but they are. Um, in groups of four. So they're all jumbled up and you've got to match uh, the four groups of phrases together. Um, so to begin with, to give you a bit of help, uh, you want to identify four types of insurance. So give you a bit of a hand for the first part of the connection wall there. See if you can get four types of insurance and put those in the chat, please. Um, if you want to start looking at the others, you can do so and put those back in the chat as well. So what do we think, folks? Four types of insurance there. Can you spot them? Please put them in the chat room now. OK, Chris, are we ready to, to give them the answers for this? Yep, so the first one you could have got is uh, for the insurance, you've got pet uh, insurance, you've got health insurance, you've got life insurance and also life assurance. If anyone can tell me the difference between life assurance and life insurance, there, extra kudos uh, for yourselves as well. Okay, so I'm getting loads of stuff um, in the chat now uh, about all of that stuff, so excellent. So keep going with your connections. I'll give you a clue that the next one is financial institutions and see if you can get those ones, please. Okay, good stuff. So uh, Joyce Fair has identified uh, one of the uh, more trickier ones in that connection board. So see Matt, good stuff. So lots of other ones coming through as well. Okay, great stuff. So uh, Jim, if you want to reveal the answers for the second one. So if financial institutions, 
Uh, we have the Bank of England, the NSNI, uh, pawnbrokers and credit unions. Okay, and lots of you have actually put the answers to uh, another one there. So, uh, Jim, if we could bring up the third one, please. So it's to do with consumer protection in relation to personal finance. Loads of you were getting this in the chat just now. Uh, so the Consumer Credit Act, Financial Conduct Authority, the FSCS, and then the Ombudsman Service as well. So they were the connection there. And then last but not least, uh, we've got the different forms of guidance and advice when it comes to personal finance. You've got the Systems Advice Bureau, price comparison websites, debt counselors, and then IFAs as well. Good stuff. Thank you very much for your comments in the chat there. Okay, let's move on to the next activity. Chris, this is one is yours. Okay, so we've got uh, two statements here and you have to work out uh, whether they're true or false and then give the answer uh, in the chat. So it could be a combination of true and false statements in, in the statements one and two there. So you've just got to work out which one's true uh, which one's false and then work out the combination there. So for statement one, social media is seen as a formal way of communicating with customers by banks. Is that true or false? And then postal banking is a popular method of making financial transactions, financial transaction with banks. So what do you think? Which combination of true or false for those statements, please? Okay, so lots of answers coming through. So we've got a mixture at the moment. So some saying B, uh, quite a few have put D and C. So let's see what else we get up there. Okay, good stuff. Yeah, so lots of you are putting, putting D now coming through there. Uh, if we could have the answer, please. So it is D, they are both false. Uh, social media is not necessarily a formal way of communicating uh, with customers, although they might have those channels, it's not seen as formal. Postal banking is a method of making financial transactions, but it's certainly not, not as popular uh, as other ones. Next one, please. Okay, so the next true or false statements then. So statement one, young, adult, young adults are likely to have a mortgage, and then middle-aged adults with children are likely to have high expenditure. So what's the combination there of those statements about true or false? Okay, again, getting a real mixture here as well. So a couple of Ds, a few Cs. Okay, general consensus there is C. Good stuff. So, Jim, if we could have the answer, please. And it is indeed C. Thank you. Have you got one more true or false, or was it just two? I can't remember. Might have a few more. Got another one coming no, on. got <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the number three then in the true or false statement. So basic current accounts offer customers overdrafts, and then premium accounts charge more for overdrafts than standard accounts. So what do we think there? Which of those statements is true, false? And we'll see what we get in the chat here. Okay, so another combination of C and D. Let's see if we get more of a general consensus. Okay, again, a real mixture. I haven't really got uh, any uh, landslide uh, answers here. Lots of, lots of people are saying C at the moment. Jim, if we could have the answer, please. Okay, it is in fact D. So a basic current account wouldn't offer a customer an overdraft because they may have got into financial problems before. So the basic current account is just the most simple type of account that you can get. Premium accounts don't charge more for overdrafts than standard accounts there as well. So both of those statements are false. Okay, next one. I think we've got one more true or false statement. So store cards are a type of payment offered by individual retailers. And then statement two, charge cards have flexible payback terms. So which uh, combination of true or false do we have with those statements, please? Uh, 
Okay, so I haven't got too many answers coming through yet. I think there might be a slight delay with the chat at my end. So lots of you are saying B now just coming through. Okay, uh, if we could have the answer, please. So statement one is true, and then statement two is false there. A charge card uh, doesn't have flexible payback terms. This is an example of that would be uh, Amex, uh, where you do have to pay off the outstanding balance at the end of each month. So it's normally for high spenders there. Uh, so a little bit different to a normal uh, debit or credit card. Lovely, thank you. Okay, so this next activity, we call it red herring. Uh, there's two elements that you have to do here. The first, you have to identify which one of the four statements is the odd one out. And then you have to say why, and then what is the link with the three that are remaining? Okay, so we've got transfers can be made the same day, best used for low value payments. There is no limit on the amount that can be transferred and there's a fixed charge for the transaction. So which one is the odd one out? And then what links the remaining three? Okay, we've got quite a few people here identifying B as the odd one out. Chris? Uh, so yes, B is the odd one out there, but uh, did anyone manage to get that it was about CHAPS, which is a method of payment. So one of the trickier ones uh, within learning aim A is understanding uh, CHAPS, BACS and faster payment, but uh, it's not generally used for low value payments. It's going to be for much higher payments, it's normally used by solicitors um, uh, and those who are transferring lots of money, for, say, for example, uh, purchasing a house would be uh, one way in which it could be used there. Okay, next okay, question. Okay, on to the next. <laughs> okay, so here we go. We've got uh, financial security, no guarantee of returns, unpredictable, and need to be willing to lose your investment. So which one of those is the odd one out? Why? And then the next one, can you identify the link with those remaining three? Okay, we've got uh, people, a range of answers here. So A, C. Jim, can you give us the answer, please? Sorry, Chris, can you give us the answer? Jim, can you press the button? <laughs> uh, yeah, so these are all about risks of investment. So uh, a risk uh, of investment would not include financial security. Uh, so no guarantee of returns, they're unpredictable. You need to be willing to lose your investment. Uh, so yeah, A was the odd one out there. Thank you to those who managed to get that right. Okay, and our third one here, we've got charge card, standing order, mortgage and cash. So which one of those is the odd one out? And then can you tell us what, what is the link between the remaining three? Okay, it looks like we're on a, a roll with correct answers here. Most people typing in C. Chris, the answer is? Uh, the answer is uh, indeed C there. So yeah, they're all methods of payment apart from mortgage, which is a method of borrowing. Okay, and here's our next one here. So insurance companies, B pawnbrokers, C pension providers, and D credit unions. So which one of those is the odd one out and why? Okay, Chris, shall we go through the answer on this? Yeah, so the answer here is going to be B, which is pawnbrokers. So types of financial institution covered by the FSCS. This one was a little bit harder, um, but it does come up in your exam about the types of organisation that are covered uh, when it comes to consumer protection. So yeah, pawnbrokers is not uh, covered by the FSCS there. Okay, right, so the big reveal then, uh, this is a game where you're going to have to work out uh, what the answer is based on the uh, clues that are given. And as the cl more clues are revealed, you should be able to refine your answer uh, and try and get that right. So if we can have the first clue, please. So we know that it's gonna be a method of payment, so it's quite broad here. 
So see if you, you might want to guess in the chat to see if you get any of those right. Uh, and then if we give that a few moments, we'll then see how we get on. So we know that it's a method of payment, but does anyone want to guess which one it might be? Okay, so we know that so the second clue is that it's widely accepted by retailers. So we can perhaps narrow down some options here about what it might be. Uh, see if we've got any answers in the chat. So we've got cash in the chat. We've got credit card, debit card. Okay, so we're getting some uh, number of answers coming through here. Okay, let's have the next clue and see what we've got. So it's issued by financial institutions. So again, that might help confirm what you think it might be already. Okay, lots of people putting down credit card, debit card or card payments. Let's have the fourth clue. So it's a secure method of payment as well. Okay, loads of uh, answers coming through now. Let's have the final clue. So it allows consumer, uh, allows consumer to delay payments for goods and services. Uh, so that really may help uh, with the final clue there to get your answer there. Okay, so we're getting lots of card payments. Okay, we're getting debit and credit cards. Yeah, credit cards is coming through now. So if we just reveal that answer there, perfect. So that, that answer was a credit card. Okay, should we move on to the next one? Yep, so we've now got, we've now got one more um, big reveal to do. So if we can have the first clue, please. So it is a type of borrowing. So we had a method of payment before, now we've got a type of borrowing. So let's have the second clue, give them a bit more of a chance. So it's an agreement, an agreement is drawn up between the lender uh, and the consumer. So that may help narrow down what that form of uh, borrowing is. So a few ideas in the chat, we've got loan, overdraft, mortgage. So a couple of ideas there. Okay, let's go to the next clue. So it's used to purchase items of value. Again, that might, uh, okay, so we're getting lots of mortgages coming through here. Okay, let's reveal the next clue. So it allows consumers to purchase and use an asset straight away. Okay, I've got a bit of a lag on the chat here, but all right, if we have the final clue then, please. So consumers do not own the asset until the end of the agreement. So let's see if we can get any more uh, ideas in the chat there. So lots of you still saying loans and mortgages. So this is a method of payment where you don't actually own the asset. Okay, so we've got higher purchases come up there. So still mortgages coming up. If we could have the answer, please, Jim. Okay, and it is indeed higher purchase. So that, that agreement that's drawn up, um, you can use that asset straight away, but you don't own that asset until the end of that agreement. Okay, good stuff. Thank you very much, everyone. Are we doing a third one or are we... Uh, should we... I thought we, we may as well just skip this one, I think, because... Uh, okay, okay, so we... So oh, sorry, Michelle, oh. I interrupted you. Go ahead. <laughs> So you're so enthusiastic, Chris. Okay, so this is the bubble quiz. Uh, it's a bit of a take on a multiple choice uh, question format. However, in this quiz, uh, there may be no answers correct, right the way up to four answers correct. So you need to decide how many of the answers shown are correct. Okay, so let's go through to the first question. So I'm going to read out the uh, questions and Chris will give the answers. So which of these are features of car insurance? So what do we think? Is it uh, A, legal requirement, B, no access required, C, protects against damage caused to a third party, or D, you will keep your no claims bonus no matter how many times you claim. So the number of answers that can, are correct, remember, can range from zero to four. So which letters correspond to the correct answers. Okay, so let's have a look through the chat there. So we're getting lots of C's coming through here. So it protects against damage caused to a third party. Uh, a, couple of, a couple of A's dotted in there as well. Okay, so we've got, yeah, 
uh, some numbers of these answers are put up there. So some of you are saying, well, two of those uh, are correct. Some of you are saying three. Okay, so if we can reveal the answer there for, for this one, please. Okay, so oh, yeah. features of car insurance, so it is a legal requirement and protects against damage caused to a third party. Uh, obviously the ones in there that weren't correct are no excess required and you'll keep your no claims bonus no matter how many times you claim. So those, those are not features. Okay, next question. So we're thinking here about individual savings account. So which of these are advantages of taking out an individual savings account, an ISA? Is it a, interest rates can be higher than other savings accounts. You can save up to £20,000 in an ISA. C, withdrawn money can be replenished in an ISA. Or D, tax-free on interest earned. So the number of answers that are correct, and you might want to type in which of those letters you think are correct. Okay, so just looking at the chat now, a couple of you are saying D, B and D here. So uh, identifying, so lots of people saying that D is correct. See if we can get any more A, C, Ds coming through. Got uh, someone saying three there. Okay, good stuff. So if we could have the answers up, we'll have a look at how many of those were correct. Okay, so it was indeed three uh, of those answers were correct. So interest rates can be higher compared to other savings accounts. You can save up to £20,000 and they are tax-free on any interest that is earned at the end of uh, the period that the ICE is taken out for. Over to you, Michelle. Okay, so which of these are not features of premium bonds? So we're talking about features now. They're tax-free. Can they be easily withdrawn? Could you win up to £1 million? Well, D, interest rates are higher than that of general savings accounts. So premium bonds, what do we think? Okay, so a number of answers coming through. Some people are saying a combination of letters here, A, B, D, a couple of identified C. See if a few more come through. So C and B, A, C, so a real combination here. Okay, if we could have the answer then, please, we'll have a look and see who's got it right. Okay, none of them are actually correct. So premium bonds. Uh, so which of these are not features? Sorry, just a wording of a question there. So yeah, none of those are correct. So all, all those answers are features of premium bonds. So perhaps a wording of that question there um, meant that uh, some of you didn't get that necessarily right. Okay, right, next one and over back to you, Michelle. Okay, so thinking about payday loans here. So again, looking at features. So a feature of a payday loan. 14 day cooling off period in case you change your mind. They have very high interest rates. Loans borrowed from payday lenders are generally up to a thousand pound. A short term loan to bridge the gap between payments due and getting paid. What do we think? We type in which letters you think correspond to the correct answer. Features of a payday loan. Okay, so just having monitoring the chat here, it's just uh, coming through. I think a few, few are saying the combination of B and D. So which ones are these features? So B would be very high interest rates and D is a short-term loan to bridge the gap. Does anyone else think any differently? So we've got A, B, lots of D and B as a combination there. Someone's put A, B, C, D. Okay, if we reveal the answers there, please. Okay, so all of those are features of a payday loan there. Lovely, I think we're on to the last question now. Back to you, Michelle. So individual voluntary arrangements, IVAs, which of these are features of an IVA? A, 
makes budgeting easier, helps manage debt repayment with regular payments, provide independent advice. D, will affect future credit rating. So which letters do we think are correct? Okay, so this is one of the more trickier uh, topics that comes under uh, the personal finance. So understanding uh, what an IVA is uh, can, can really help gain uh, some of those marks in, in an exam. So what do you think there? If I look at the chat, so some of you are saying all of them. Yeah, all of them are correct. Some of a combination of A, B, D. Okay, so let's have a look at the answers then. Okay, and all of those are features there. So uh, they do uh, help make budgeting easier. See regular payments to manage debts. It's independent advice and it will uh, unfortunately affect future credit rating as well if you use an IVA to help with uh, any unmanageable debt that uh, people may get themselves into. Okay, okay I think, that brings uh, us to the end of our um, revision session. We really hope that you've enjoyed it as much as Chris and I and Jim have too. Um, do look out for our next revision session where we're moving on into section B. So we're looking at learning aims C and D of business finance. Um, we hope you've enjoyed it. Um, and if you want to sort of pop in the chat window, any other areas of the BTEC National where you think this would this type of format would be really useful, a quick knowledge check with Chris and I, then please do put it in the chat window now. Um, and I think that's the end. So, so thanks all. You've put in some cracking answers and uh, we hope you have a good rest of the afternoon. Thanks, everyone. Take care.